today is one of those relentless rainy days where the rain just doesn't want to stop. You've seen the summer thunderstorms here. That's different. They come and go. Intense buckets of rain. But then it, it moves on and you've got nice weather again. This is not like that. This is prolonged drops just coming down all day. And there's nothing you can really do to get rid of it. So if we are going to hunt today, we're going to need to just endure some of this rain. Um, which I'm very happy to do. Whether the animals will be out though, that's a different story. Well, we are doing the best with the conditions that we have. Um, I think if I was a ground scroll or a dusty, I'd want to be in my hole right now. And if I was a monkey, I'd want to be somewhere deep in a bush where I've got a bit of shelter. But fingers crossed, I mean, surely they've got to come out at some point to feed. So when they do, we'll be ready. Willing to let my gun get soaking wet for the sake of getting some cool footage while we're here. We've only got a limited number of days, so we're going to make it count. One species that doesn't seem to mind a bit of a shower is the guinea fowl. However, they also aren't in the mood for keeping still. And I never get a chance to take a shot. We do see a herd of springbuck on the hillside, but that's about it. And with the rain just continuing to come down harder and harder, we return to base and decide to hunker down and wait. We make the decision to spend the afternoon regathering some energy and enjoying some downtime at the camp, but we have some plans for later, and as the lights start to disappear, the guns are brought out once again. Well, it's been... Uh pouring with rain all day but we've just hit uh, half past six and the rain has finally stopped so we're gonna take a chance and set up the thermal on the little compact impact and um, I've had the element immersive 5x30 on top of this gun but just realized that while it worked really well in the Bobby Arnskloof setting where a lot of a lot of shots are really close like like 20 meters 25 meters um, this is probably not the right setup for this farm where a lot of your shots are 100 meters plus on monkeys and stuff that's why we haven't been using the scope um but we're going to take this off just half inch nuts on the side loosen those up take the scope off and it should hold zero so we can put this on tomorrow and it'll should have the exact same point of impact and we've got the pulsar thermion with the rangefinder and this is on a quick disconnect mount, so this one we can pretty much pop on there, mount it up, and there's our thermal. So we're going to do a quick zero check on this. Um, I've got some steel targets, we're going to warm them up on the gas stove, and then we'll put them out at like 40 yards, and we'll zero the setup on the steel. That should warm it up, we should see it easily in the thermal, and we can just check where our point of impact is on the steel and make sure we, we're all matched up. Let's go do that. Anton will be joining us tonight on this hunt and upon his arrival, <laughs> we get an early opportunity to get our tally going as a starling living in the roof of the camp is dealt with. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a starling that was living in the, in the roof here. We didn't want to make a hole in the roof, so we chased him out into a tree and clapped him. I just saw just a bit of a splatter there through the thermal. <laughs> so we got something down. <laughs> well done. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get some more. Yeah, he's dead. What makes a night out with a the thermal so exciting is that you really have no idea what you might see until you switch on the scope and start looking around. It's a chilly night, so the animals are picked up really easily with a the thermal and we quickly see a group of antelope on the hillside and a flock of guinea fowl on the valley floor before getting our first opportunity to take a hare. Oh man, just blitzed a hare but I forgot to hit record on the thermal. Oh, it was such a cool shot also. I think I pushed the wrong button. It's okay, we'll get hopefully more. Well, it's a good sign that this one's out because it means that they are out. Yeah. But why is it not recording? I'm pushing record. Oh, I'm on photo mode. 
Unless you have a photo of it. I <laughs> probably have a too. nice photo of it. <laughs> well, first head down with the uh, with the thermal tonight. Um, it's been really awesome uh, to see how much better this system works when it's actually cold. Um, the only hunting we've done has sort of been through the summer, and the problem with that is the rocks heat up and um, they heat up to similar temperature to the body temperature of a mammal so you struggle to make to differentiate between rocks and animals but now any anything that's a mammal just gets picked up so easily and this hair is still doing a bit of twitches there but yeah um, unfortunately forgot to <laughs> forgot to put this on video mode so I thought I was hitting record I ended up taking a photo but perfect shot to the head and uh, very happy to get them down it's good to see them out even though it's raining let's see if we can get some more a bit further down the valley we see number two and this time I remember to hit record. Got it. Another hair down. This one was close as well. Uh, this time I remember to hit record. Got him in the head, had to wait for him to show himself a bit because he was in a bush. Um, but yeah, this this thermal in these temperatures just shows everything up so nicely. Yeah, well done to Anton for spotting it as well. Um, that's the only thing, spotting something, I don't want to have to, you know, point the gun everywhere and try and find stuff the whole time. Thankfully we, uh, we saw him and managed to put in a good shot. All these hairs will be eaten, so we make sure to pick all of them up and to store them on the roof racks. Range finder doesn't work in the rain, unfortunately. The plan is to make our way onto the cultivated lands where the hares actually need to be controlled but on the way we see some more activity. This looks like a group of baboons sleeping on the side of a mountain and the unmistakable figures of kudus in the thick bush right next to us. As soon as we arrive on the lands the hares start popping up everywhere and I'm soon presented with another opportunity for a headshot. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm recording. Dead. The problem with this rain is that the range finder is not working. It's giving me five meters, so it's obviously just reflecting off the raindrops, and so we don't. We we kind of operating blind, but uh, this gun shoots pretty flat. It's a. a 26 grand javelin at 1,000 feet per second. It just held on his head. It sounded pretty far, maybe 60, 65 meters, something like that. So it maybe hit slightly low, but the slug, boom, on a soft target like that, will do a ton of damage. So third head down, awesome. So that's a rabbit that I was looking at. So I'll make sure. It looks a bit further than I was. Two rabbits in the field um, and dropped the one down and the second one, I think its head was in the right, I hope so, and I shot at it, so let's go look and see. Well done. Okay. Got both the rabbits down, seems like yeah. the one I popped in the head. Let's <clears throat> in its eye, mm -hmm. and I think the other one also in the head. Yeah, yeah, Pop nice. both. The one is standing, other one hopped a few meters. Its head was moving around, and I uh, was just hoping it was the head. I saw the two little ears, so I took in between them and got two of them. Nice, actually, turning out to be a good, good night of hunting. 
I wasn't sure if we'd see anything out, but it looks like the hairs don't mind the, the rain, so awesome. Well done. Yeah. Hunting without a functional rangefinder is all good and well for the close shots, but at longer ranges it becomes more of a challenge. Thankfully, a 26 grain javelin slug at 1000 feet per second shoots really flat, and this one goes down with another solid headshot. Another head down, another good headshot. Awesome. It's really satisfying that sound. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Popped him perfectly. <laughs> I think the first shot, um, I just shot over its head and then I reloaded and the second shot took on his head and he dropped in his tracks. Yeah, great. With a good number of hairs down, we decide to call it tonight. Our goal is not to wipe these animals out. They provide a good source of food for the farm workers, so we want their population to stay quite healthy. Not too many, otherwise they'll start to become a problem on these fields but we do want to be able to come and repeat this effort next season. Responsible management of animal populations is something that's really important to me. Well, um, that ended up being much better than what we expected. Not only did we get a whole bunch of hares, um, but we also got to see some really cool stuff from kudu to guinea fowl to goats <laughs> to probably a, a few other things as well that we couldn't identify. But yeah, um, didn't let the rain stop us. Thankfully we pushed through and um, even though we drenched all our camera equipment, drenched the gun, drenched ourselves, uh, we managed to get a um, good amount of hairs. And yeah, all good headshots, all of them went straight down. Yeah. So, so let's say it was worth the time and worth the while for going out. 100%. And then these will be eaten as well. We're gonna, Anton's gonna take them back and the, the farm workers will grab them and take them home. So nothing will go to waste and uh, yeah, awesome to get some more hairs down with the... This is becoming my my thermal gun. It's just so convenient, so nice and short. Perfect power for kind of small game like this. And yeah, with the thermal on you, it's, a, it's an awesome setup. So yeah, we enjoyed it. How was your first experience with the thermal, Anton? Yeah, it is actually quite nice. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's something yeah. different and it's actually amazing how far you can pick up animals with this thing. It is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't rely on its own light source, so yeah. um, that really helps. Just uh, unlucky that we couldn't use the range finder there, because yeah. it would pick up the raindrops, but yeah. we just guessed more or less and it did its job. And 100%. we were successful. Awesome. I think it's time, time for a nice hot shower now, time to go to bed, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Anton. In the next episode, as the rain finally stops, we'll be heading out into very muddy conditions and letting the lead fly as we target monkeys and dussies. This will be our most fruitful and most exciting day of monkey hunting this whole season, so make sure you don't miss it. Hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you then. Thanks for watching.